Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hey everyone, Ashley Mayu and Mike Beer here with the Daily Racing Forum. If you're a fan of racing, you know that Saturday, January 27th is a huge day out at Gulf Street Park. Seven very good stakes races, obviously the feature being their nightcap race number 13, the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. But Mike, the late pick five, it's all graded stakes actions. I thought it was an excellent sequence. What were your overall thoughts? Really, really strong sequence. I think just so many different ways you can go, Ashley. And I, I more than anything else, I just like the fact that... Um, there are favorites in some of these legs that I feel like, listen, maybe they'll just all wind up winning. I, I feel like this is one of those sequences that might not play out that way. Um, and you could do well to look around for some prices in this sequence. Absolutely. Let's dive right into it. It gets kicked off with race number nine, the grade two inside information for Phillies and mares, seven furlongs on the dirt. A nice field of 10 here, Mike. I just wanted to jump in right away with a replay here with probably, in my opinion, the local hero, the big name, the number nine, Mary Quite Contrary. This is her winning the $150,000 Rampart. And I mean, it, it's simple. She loves Gulfstream Park. Luca Panici gets along with her so well. And in here, she did get the pace that she needed to kind of mow down those pace setters. But overall, I thought this was a great performance and nice to see her back in the winner's circle. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought she ran well in here with a good trip. Uh, we'll, we'll say that. But um, she does really like this track. It's it's interesting, too, because she's more of a closing sprinter. And you feel like those horses could be compromised at Gulfstream Park. But she certainly is. And I like that she's also coming back last year, won the Rampart at a mile, cut back, won this race going seven for a long time, try to do that again this year off of a win in the Rampart. I think this race is tougher than the one she won last year, Ashley. But I, I do think this is a good spot for her. I want to use her. But I didn't think that she had to win this race. No, I do think maybe from a pace perspective, she should get the help that she needs. But the question also is, does she kind of do herself, um, you know, a lack of a favor early on because she is a closing type? Is she going to be too far back where some of the speedsters have the stamina to carry themselves? But as a couple of others in here, Intrepid Daydream, a big name here, a recent, uh, you know, acquisition to the Safi Joseph Jr. Barn was second behind Spirit Win, who we know has been very hyped since early on in her career. We haven't seen her that much. Uh, your overall thoughts on her in this spot? I mean, I think she's a contender to be sure. Um, I can't say that I love her in this race. I thought she ran fine last time in the Sugar Swirl when she got wired uh, by Spirit Wind. I'm a little concerned about seven furlongs. I don't know how you feel about it. I feel like six furlongs is probably her best distance. And I'm concerned that she's maybe not as good going seven, um, especially with some pace. I mean, I feel like there's a chance this pace gets pretty fast. I don't know. She was a tough call for me. I'll probably try to use her in the pick five if I can afford it. But I, I don't love this horse at a short price. Are there any other names in here that stood out to you? Uh, you know, gerrymander, you talk about a horse maybe in the case of Inter uh, Trap and Daydream not liking the seven A's. This is a horse that's cutting back in distance, maybe that helps her out of those mile races. I kind of like her cutting back a little bit. I I'm, haven't been her biggest fan in New York, but I do think she's interesting in here, um, going a shorter distance against this field, especially at the morning line price, because I think she's a great price on the line against this kind of field. And the other horse for me, Personally, and a horse I'll probably bet to win in this race is the horse on the rail, uh, the number one blue field. I definitely want to use this horse. I thought she ran fine in the sugar swirl last time. Really liked her win going seven for lunch, two starts back. And certainly, obviously, should improve. She's been lightly raced in those last six or seven months. We haven't seen her too much. This one also trained by Safi Joseph Jr. Interesting. Blavi and Pratt booked to ride her in the inside information. So that was the first leg. The next leg that we have is the turf race. Mile and a 16th. This is the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mare Turf Invitational. Another big field here where you're going to see 12 with an also eligible of the number 13, Be My Sunshine. In my opinion, Mike, this was a race to spread. Did you get the same initial impressions? I did, mostly because I'm very interested to hear how you feel about this opinion um, that I have in this race, Ashley. But I think you're supposed to spread in here because Star Fortress, the four, and listen, maybe she's as good as the stateside debut made her look. She won the grade three Cardinal with a 104 buyer by 10 lengths. Maybe she is that good. I got to be honest, I'm not completely sold on this horse. Um, over a good turf course like Churchill Downs, where I just feel like they couldn't keep that turf course um, open for most of the year last year. Some horses liked it. Some horses didn't. I don't know, man. I, I mean, maybe she's just better than these horses. I am not sold on her at a short price. I kind of want to try to beat her. I think the nine, Didia, is the horse to beat in here. 
And Diddy has a nice price on the morning line, six to one. And maybe it's because she disappointed last time out in the Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Turf. But look at her to before that. I mean, it was race after race that she was there. She has the versatility to be further back or a little bit closer to the pace. So I really like her in the spot, a horse that I thought was a must use. But just to look at a couple others in here, uh, Fluffy Socks. Want to show a, a race of hers, the most recent in the grade one at Matriarch. It was a big field this year. Now, I don't know top to bottom. Uh, how tough the group was through and through with those 11 rivals. But I did think this was a really nice performance from her. And to me, it was a step forward off of her last several. I mean, she's got a really nice late kick here and she just gets denied in the end. Yeah. I mean, just a, another really solid race that if you've followed fluffy socks throughout her career, this is what you get. I mean, she shows up every single time. There's no bad races on her card. Unfortunately for her, she just happens not to win that often. Um, she was wide last time. The winner you saw come up the inside and nail her. Um, good performance, you know, to me, she can easily win here. I don't, I felt like there were better options perhaps in a pick five sequence, if only because she's not a great price for these connections. Um, and I do feel like she'll need to catch a break or two if she's going to, you know, wind up winning this race. Now, horse that I'm a little intrigued by at a big price, and I could see going either way. You either like her and think she's got some intrigue, or you don't, is the number five full count Felicia. And we're actually going to take a look at her most recent performance. I like that she got a run over the Gulfstream Park turf course. They've talked about it. They've made improvements to it. She does have that race over it. And you go down the page, I mean, she's been consistent. She's had a few dull efforts, but I think the way that she closes here with that late kick, this is a pretty nice performance. She delivered as the favorite and i think now it's a little bit of a test for her i, I think you're going to get the right price on her i think you are too i like her i really like her tactical speed too in this race because there could be a really good trip coming she's obviously improved for Brittany russell i guess if, if you're splitting hairs um you're going to split hairs along the lines of that race we just watched she got a perfect trip against an inferior field this just it feels like a way tougher spot for her but i won't be surprised when she runs well and you look at this field, I mean, there's a lot of horses, they're, they're bigger prices in terms of the morning line. Anyone else outside of Didia, I know you really like her in here, that you were intrigued by. I'm definitely going to use Didia in this race. The other horses that I just wanted to include at better prices, because again, I kind of feel like um, the more I looked at it, the more I wanted to play against Star Fortress in this race. And if she beats me, she beats me. Um, I want to use the two chili flag for Chad Brown. I think she's underrated. Um, she has had no setups. Um, trying, you know, her running style doesn't really fit that well in New York on the turf because they just don't go <laughs> fast paces in front of her. Um, but I think when she gets the right trip and the right setup, I think she's way better than she looks on paper. So she was a horse I wanted to throw in there. I'll use, I'll also use the number 12, surprisingly. I hate her post position. She's going to be a huge price in here. Um, and I, I think she's another horse who's really underrated. If she could somehow work out a trip from out there, I think she could be there at the end. I like who she gets. She gets Murphy in the irons. I think he's been riding really well. I wish he's had a little, you know, more chances at Gulfstream since moving his tack there for the winter. But um, I agree. I think you'll get the right price for those connections. And I don't think you typically would see that with him in the irons for Todd Fletcher. Middle leg of the sequence we'll move on to. Really curious to get your thoughts on this race. It is the grade three Fred Hooper, that famous one turn mile at Gulfstream Park here. And you get a field, a big field, once again, of 12. And the first question, we'll look at the replay. The only replay I pulled here is Hijazi, because I feel like you either like him or you probably have reservations about him. And he's 8-5 to five on the morning line. He's simply second best here to speed Boat Beach. But he runs well. But I just, I don't know what to do with him. I mean, obviously, they paid a lot of money for him. His expectations are high. But he hasn't necessarily accomplished that much. Yeah, that's, that's that was my concern with him, too. I mean, maybe it's... Maybe at the end of the day, Baffert is just shipping him into the right spot here, um, going the one-turn mile with speed from the inside and, you know, certainly dropping in class for this race. I thought he ran fine last time, but he was only second best. And you're right. They paid a lot of money for him. He's got 399 buyer speed figures, a 100 buyer speed figure in his second career start. So he's fast enough to win here. He also has a maiden win and an entry-level allowance win to his name so far. And that's it. I mean... I don't know, maybe it's a great spot for him, but I'm not sold on this horse. No, certainly at what could be a very, very short price on him. And it is a big field. I felt like there were a lot of horses that look, you look at them, you say, hey, you can get a piece. I think you can get a piece in here, but you don't really know where the cards are going to fall, fall. Excuse me. Ultimately, who'd you end up using in this spot? I mean, I'm most interested in the horse uh, on the outside here. Signatories, 15 to 1 on the morning line. I really like this horse cutting back a little bit in distance. I, I feel like the nine, he'll get nine furlongs, but I don't feel like that's his best distance. I think he's better going shorter, especially when he has some pace in front of him. And I think he'll have some pace in front of him here. Uh, and I still think he has some upside as well. I really like this horse in this race. 
I want to really focus my attention on him. And if I use anybody else, I probably use the eight accretive, um, who I think had a big excuse last time over a wet track. He didn't like, um, and he also had an excuse two starts back in the 49er. I agree. I really like the horse on the outside. I think the price will be right. I don't think he actually raced bad last time out as well in the Queens County. I think it was an okay effort. So excited to see him make his first appearance over the main track at Gulfstream Park. So now we move the last two legs of the sequence, the two big races on Pegasus World Cup Day. And race number 12 is the Pegasus World Cup Turf Invitational. Grade one status, million dollars, mile and an eighth on a turf. Uh, I thought this may be the toughest race of all. I felt like there were a lot of horses that they either come off of, you know, into this race off a nice performance or a winning performance, or you go down the page on others, two and three back. They were right there. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you also have some, you know, still uh, relatively lightly raced three-year-olds who are now four-year-olds stepping up who really have a lot of upside and could just keep getting better. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. Um, let's start off, though, talking about your morning line favorite right there, the number nine, Warm Heart, nine to five. What what did you want to do with her? I I feel like she's the right horse in here as far as the horse to be. If you want to identify the horse to beat, it's her. This is a really good spot for Warm Heart. Um, I don't know. I, you know, cutting back, I, I'm not so sure that she's going to be as good going nine for as she is in those longer races that she's excelled at overseas. That's probably her biggest task, right, that she has to face here. It's not the level of competition that she's facing. It's the distance. And it is a little bit of a concern. I mean, you look at her group one victories in Great Britain and France. We're talking a mile and a half. And then when she came here to, to race at Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup Philly Meritor, first off, she ran, we saw just now, very, very well to get denied like that. It was going a mile and a quarter. I think even now shortening back up, it might not do her favor. She's going to need to get the pace set up that she needs. And I will say, luckily, though, at Santa Anita, for a mile and a quarter, I thought the fractions, at least the opening half, they were swift enough and she was close enough to it, just maybe second best that day. That's kind of my takeaway from that. Yeah, certainly. She she did run really well in that race, and she was only second best um, it, it, after a really good trip and ride from Ryan Moore. It, it, it took a superstar, basically, and in spiral to run her down at the end of that race, but she ran great. Um, I wasn't as taken with her most recent start over in Hong Kong. I know it was a, probably a better race than this one. I didn't think she ran that well. Um, I'm, I'm concerned, you know, that the shorter distance doesn't really help her. I, I do think she's the horse to beat in here, but I didn't feel like, you know, it was a layup for her in this, but I thought there were other horses you could use. Now, speaking of some other horses at three to one on the morning line is the number three integration. We haven't seen him since his final start of his three-year-old campaign, which was just his third start. And we will take a look at that race. That was at Aqueduct in the grade two Hill Prince. He's won pretty easy, Mike, in these three races now, and he's shown some tactical ability to be a little bit closer, to be further back. He's got a really nice late kick. What do you take away from those performances and what he faced in those races? You know, for me, um, yeah, maybe not facing, you know, the best horses. He faced some pretty good three-year-olds, though, along the way. Um, this is clearly the toughest race he's ever been in. Um, the flip side of that is, how good is this horse? I mean, I have no idea how good this horse could be. He's been super impressive, especially that one that we just watched. I mean, maybe those fractions aren't right, but you can look at those fractions on your page right now and see how fast this horse is coming home in a nine furlong race. Um, and when you watch the video, it certainly looks like he was going that fast. He was awesome last time. Yeah, his stride is just something that's really impressive for a horse that doesn't have a lot of race day experience. Is still young. He's a newly turned four-year-old, and it's only going to be his fourth career start. So I think for me, it's just, you know, this will be the acid test for him. This will be the class test. And if he can show what he's shown in the past against this level, he could be the real deal. Uh, curious to get your thoughts on some bigger, you know, prices in here. Two of them kind of stood out to me as maybe horses to use, one of which is Web Slinger. We will take a look at his most recent effort. This is a horse to me that like he doesn't take as much respect as he should, but he really tries to fire a race every single time. And he comes up a little short here behind program trading. But, uh, you know, he he took a little love in here. And I thought this was a great effort at the nine furlong distance. He ran really well in here. He ran really well. Two starts back in the Twilight Derby where he's just left with too much to do. Um, and he just couldn't quite get there. Um, even his, his race three back, the grade one in Saratoga, he did not get a great trip in that race and ran well again. I mean, he keeps coming up short. But I don't think it's a real character flaw with this horse. I just think things haven't worked out with him in his last three starts. He could easily win here. And then the only other thing I want to ask you about here, uh, Mike, is when I looked at this field, horses like King Max, the Damo, Masterpiece, when they're good, they're very strong. They're horses that I think will offer value in this race. Did any of them maybe you know sneak onto your ticket here at what could be a price? Yeah, I like King Max in this race. I'm definitely going to use him. I, I appreciate that he's lightly raced, and I thought he ran really well 
in his most recent start off the layoff with a pace that didn't really work to his advantage. I thought that was a really good performance. I'm going to use him, uh, Adamo, probably not, um, but I, I won't be surprised when he runs well in here. I'm a masterpiece fan. I kind of feel like last time was the time to have him at a really good price, but I don't mind them going shorter um, with him in this spot. Um, and I feel like a, a horse that I'll try to throw in there somewhere is the 12 catnip. I think this horse is, is really underrated and I like him cutting back. They tried to stretch him out uh, last summer and he ran fine. This business is better for this horse. He might have been my top pick in the grade one Arlington Million, and now I've tossed him. So he broke my heart a little bit, Mike, but I agree. He was really strong before that. And I think it's nice to see him that he's put on the shelf for a bit, and they're regrouping in a really big spot. So maybe that speaks to their confidence in catnip. But we'll round it out right now in the final leg, the feature race, the $3 million grade one Pegasus World Cup Invitational. 12 in the main body. We do have that one also eligible. And... First thing I have to ask you, you know, National Treasury is nine to five on the morning line. What do you make of him in general in this spot? He's to me, he's a really tough call because I, I know that he can win this race. Um, he, he is a tough call, though. It, it's interesting when you look at him. He's the big win, obviously, for him is the Preakness last summer. I think it's the worst race that this horse ran all year as a three year old, the Preakness, where he just got away with a slow pace and barely beat a bad horse. Um, in Blazing Sevens. Uh, my problem with him is I hate that race, and I like everything else this horse did last year without winning, and that includes the Breeders' Cup Mile, um, his his final start. I thought he ran great in that race and took a tough beat. Yeah, we'll take a look at that in a little bit, but or actually we can actually do it right now. We have it queued up here. Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, it's him and Cody's wish. I thought this was just great riding, grace riding on both riders' part here in the stretch, and yeah. he comes up a little short, um, I agree with you in the sense that you either love him in the spot or maybe, you know, he just doesn't find the winner circle all the time. I thought to me, this is probably the best we've seen him. I completely yeah. agree with what you said in the Preakness. Things went his way. That is why he won. No one pressured him. It was a really great ride by Johnny Velasquez and, and that's how it panned out. Um, you know, I, I think at nine to five, if he's anywhere close to that, I think it's, a, I think he's deservingly actually the favorite in here. Him in first yeah. mission looks like the horse is on paper might just be too short of a price. So, you know, looking at some others in here, um, I'm going to give it away. I'm going to go with a price horse on top as my top pick in general in here, and that's O'Connor. And we'll take a look at his most recent win. And he's eight to one. I could actually see him going off maybe a tad higher. He won the Fayette. He had a little bit of refreshing. He comes back to Gulfstream Park, and he's able to get a second win. This is the grade three Harlan's Holiday. I like that he was able in here to sneak up the inside, which I thought was nice to see from him. And when they brought this horse over, I remember being in South Florida, O'Connor was the horse that was talked about. He was supposed yeah. to be really good and he was never in the spotlight. He never performed up to, you know, the expectations that they had. I just think now he's getting good at the right time. And I think in terms of trip, he might get an okay trip in this spot. I can't argue with, with any of that. It does feel like he's maybe finally putting it all together. They thought he was going to be good. Now he is good. And he comes off of a really nice win last time. And I do agree with you. I think there could be a good trip coming uh, for that horse. I don't love him in here. I'm not way against him. Uh, my top pick was the three dynamic one who was second off the left. I missed a ton of time, but this horse was a good three-year-old. He was a really good four-year-old. He just missed a ton of time. Forget about that last race off the long layoff sprinting uh, or a one turn mile, actually not sprinting, but a one turn mile, which is too short for him. And it looked like he needed the race anyway. There's a reason when you go through his PPs that there are no starts at Belmont Park for this horse for Todd Bletcher, even though he's based in New York. This horse wants longer distances and he wants two turns and you don't get that at Belmont. And you'll certainly get that on Saturday. From a pace perspective, obviously, National Treasure likes to be forward. But another horse that's kind of interesting in the spot is the number four, Hoist the Gold, who will take a look at that most recent effort. I mean, this effort, at least on paper, jumps off the page. It was a big field. It's the grade two cigar a mile. He's going to draw clear in here. Seemed like the off track helped him. It seemed like stretching him out also helped him. But, Mike, he went pretty quick here. I mean, you don't get a 109 buyer for nothing. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, he went a, a fast pace. They wanted to lead with him, obviously. They sent him from the gate. He got it, and he just never gave this field a chance. He's running away from them through the stretch. It's worth pointing out this was um, a, a day at Aqueduct on the main track, a, a wet seal track. Speed was dominant. It won every single race, um, and this horse just had a huge advantage in making the early lead in that race. He still ran the race that he ran, um, but I don't love him stretching out in here. Um, and I would just wait and see what kind of price he is. At 12 to 1 on the morning line, I won't argue with him off of that most recent effort. Um, but I, I, I'd be reluctant to, to bet this horse back at any kind of short price. And then a quick question for you. First mission, he's lightly raced. He's done a little wrong. 
What do you take away from his Clark performance? Do you think he finds himself in a in a good spot to maybe get the job done here? I do. I, I think he ran the best race in the Clark. He just happened not to win. Um, and it's it's worth remembering. We've been talking about uh, that that uh, Preakness stakes uh, earlier with National Treasure. This horse was going to be the favorite in that race before he was forced to scratch and missed a lot of time. He's come back with two good performances, though, since that layoff. Um, I think this horse is going to be really tough in here. So you've heard our opinions for the five legs of that late pick five at Gulfstream Park. It's ticket time. And uh, looking at our tickets, I guess I'll start with mine here. I, I didn't spend as much as I thought I would. I think there's a couple of races that maybe I would take more coverage. The races that I'd probably look to if I wanted to spend more um, would be race number nine and probably race 12. Um, those are the ones that I thought were really tough. I do really love Mary Quite Contrary and what she's been able to do locally, but she's in deeper waters, as you mentioned, Mike, compared to this year's edition and last year's edition. You can see I do spread in a race number 10. I do use Sri DeVos horse. I mean, if that horse can kind of, you know, replicate that performance against this field, I think it's okay to say that that horse might be the real deal. But what do you take away from that short field that that one faced at Churchill Downs and that only start here stateside? Hajazi, I said, you know, you either like the horse or you don't. I could never single Hajazi. I agree with you. I think this horse might be in the right spot to get the job done. But I do have a lot of interest in the 12. And I think the price will be right. You can see I use three horses in race number 12. And for me, I mentioned O'Connor's my top pick. But on paper, I think this could be first missions race to win. So a $48 play for me. And Mike, your ticket, I know it's a little heftier, but you're really going to rely on that single in that middle leg. Yeah, I, I want to try to make uh, Signature win. So he's going to be sort of the key to this whole thing to keep the ticket down. And then I just sort of spread out in the other legs with prices. Um, you can see that there's no Star Fortress um, in the Philly, the Pegasus Philly Mer Turf. There's no Hijazi who's going to be a short price. There's no Warm Heart in the Pegasus Turf um, who is going to be the favorite in that race. I just I have left most of the favorites out, and I'm just going to try to spread around and get some prices uh, in these races. Um, I even threw Skippy Longstocking in in the Pegasus World Cup. He's got a terrible post with a short run to the first turn, but he's good enough to win here if he can somehow work out a trip, and he's going to be a fair price. He was awesome in the Charlestown Classic or late in 2023, back in August. And I think the big thing here, Mike, when you look at your ticket, I mean, you know, assuming you can get through those legs and you get your single home, your single is going to offer value. So the payout yeah. here should be a, a pretty nice one, to say the least. Yeah, that's why I played it that way. I tend, I try not to spend tons of money in these in these multi race sequences, but I will do it if I'm throwing out a bunch of short prices and I threw out just about every short price in the sequence. There you have it. Those are our thoughts and opinions on the late pick five this Saturday out at Gulfstream Park. Don't forget seven graded stakes races, those three Pegasus World Cup events, some really nice races even earlier on the card. So best of luck.